Greetings fellow Dungeon Delvers and welcome to Dorians and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building a Felios, the weapon of the faithful. Mr. 200 Years of Game Design is a Lunari born during a lunar convergence, along with his twin sister Alun. They spent their early years on the run, constantly skulking in the shadows, hiding from the religious persecution of the Solari. Aphelios drove himself heavily to become strong enough to protect his sister from them, and went so far as to poison himself with the Noctum Flower to open his mind to the power of the night. The consequence of this was that he became mute, but his sister had gained the ability to communicate to him telepathically from her temple, and also to provide him weapons through the moonstones he carried. Their symbiotic link allows them to protect the Lunari from the Solari, and hopefully usher in a new era of peace. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to thank one of this month's Dorn's Blade patrons, Fion. Fion chose Aphelios to build as part of the rewards for our Blade tier patrons. Speaking of, we released our first homebrew, Denizens of the Void, to our Blade patrons this month. Here's a preview for next month's release, Into the Frozen Tundra, based on the Freljord. We also started a cool little merch shop. Come join us for discounts on that and homebrewed content every month. All right, now let's get into it. First, let's cover the goals of this build. Aphelios has five weapons, and each of them has an ability tied to it we need to replicate. Is... Is that not enough? We... We need another goal. Uh... He also needs to be able to bring the pain, so we need to make sure we get those stats up there. For race, we're gonna go with Variant Human. Surprise, surprise, but we want to take a free feat so we can still max out two ability scores. Speaking of ability scores, Varian humans get a plus one to two ability scores, we'll take dexterity and intelligence. There's also a skill proficiency. We'll take sleight of hand, with how often he's reaching to grab a new weapon and reloading. For our free feat, we're going to take sharpshooter. This lets you attack at the longest range without disadvantage, ignore all but full cover, and whenever you make a range attack, you can take a minus five to the hit and add ten flat damage to the shot. This is very powerful. For background, we're going to take the obvious approach and go with Acolyte. Aphelios is a devoted disciple to the teachings of the Lunari. This gives us skill proficiencies in insight and religion, as well as the shelter of the faithful feature. You'll receive free healing and care at any Lunari temple, and anyone who follows the Lunari faith will support you as well. You know, 200 years of game design later and Riot somehow hasn't made a mechanic based around the best design stat system ever, the standard array. Roll if you'd like, but we need at least a 13 in Intelligence and Dexterity for multi-classing. We'll start with the High Dexterity. Aphelios is a sharpshooter and his Moonblades are light and nimble weapons. Next we'll take Intelligence. Trust me, you need Big Brain to play this champ well. He's very complex. Wisdom is next. Having the willpower to eat a poisonous flower to gain your abilities is pretty metal. Strength is surprisingly not our dump stat. Constitution can't be too high because ADC and Charisma will have its own explanation. Like I said, Aphelios is squishy, so our Constitution is going to be our 10 score. And finally, we'll dump Charisma. Aphelios is mute now and really only communicates with his sister. Okay, so this build actually has a ton of equipment. Possibly the most we've ever had. First, we'll get the bad news sniper rifle for Calibrum. Next, we'll need a Chakram for Crescendum. We'll reflavor a dart, as they're already a finesse for ranged weapon. We'll also grab a pistol for Severum. Finally, we don't get our guns until level 3, so we need some Moonblades until then. Just take two short swords and flavor appropriately. Alrighty, let's kick off the build with a level in Fighter. Aphelios trained his butt off to become a Lunari warrior. Fighters have a d10 hit die and proficiency with all armors and weapons, as well as shields. You also get to choose two skill proficiencies. We'll take Perception and Acrobatics. First level fighters choose their fighting style as well. We'll take Archery to gain some accuracy with a plus two to our ranged weapon attack rolls. The last level one fighter feature is Second Wind, which will let us heal back 1d10 plus your fighter level once per rest. Blah blah, use it before your hit die, you know this by now. Second level fighters only get one feature, but like I always say, it's one of the best features in the game, Action Surge. This lets you push yourself to the limit and take another full action on your turn. There's some really powerful stuff this will let you do. Remember, this recharges on a short or long rest. Level 3 fighters choose their martial archetype. It's time for Aphelios and Loon to merge and the Moonstone weapons to start flying. 
we're going to go with the Gunslinger approach. This gives a bunch of features, so brace yourself. First, we have Firearm Proficiency, which will let you wield guns competently. Then you get the Gunsmith feature, which lets you craft ammunition and create new firearms per the table. Technically, it's a loon who does this, but it'll have to be you for D&D purposes. Perhaps she can whisper in your ear and guide you. You also become an Adept Marksman, which means you learn some sweet trick shots and get a pool of resources known as Grit Points to spend to use them. Your Grit Pool is equal to your Wisdom Mod. You get a free Grit Point whenever you land a killing blow on a creature of significant threat, or when you roll a critical strike with a firearm. Speaking of those trick shots, we're going to use some of them to get our abilities. Violent Shot combined with the Bad News Sniper will give us Moonshot. You can spend any amount of grip points to make an attack hit harder. Each point adds plus two to the misfire chance, but if it hits, you get an additional damage die for each point added. Be careful with Sharpshooter on this one, it can blow up in your face big time. But high risk, high reward, it will be a pretty awesome shot. Winging Shot is going to work as our Binding Eclipse. Spend a grip point when you land a hit to force a strength save on the target. If they fail, they get knocked prone. Dazing Shot is going to be the passive slow from Gravitum until we can get something a little better later. Spend a grip point on a hit and the target has to make a con save or have disadvantage on attacks until the end of their next turn. That was a lot of features, geez. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. We're going to get some better aim and a little more oomph in our shots with two points in dexterity. Level 5 fighters gain extra attack. This lets us fire two shots instead of one whenever we take the attack action. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement. We're going to max our decks here with two points. Now we're going to have a plus eight chance to our hit and at least five guaranteed on hit damage. Level seven gunslingers gain the quick draw feature. You get to add your proficiency bonus to your initiative and you can draw and stow your firearms as a single object interaction on your turn. You'll also get your third trick shot here, but we already covered your options for that earlier. Alright, now that we've gotten most of our guns, we need to get the others through the Artificer class. Again, Alun is technically the Artificer, but just roll with it. You're still gonna hit like a truck. Artificers have a D8 hit die and give us proficiencies with Thieves tools. They get the ability to do some magical tinkering, which lets you make a tiny object magical. It can shed some light, record and speak a message, emit a sound or odor, or generate something visually. Second level artificers gain the ability to infuse items with magic based on their artificer infusions and a few caveats. There are only two infusions we specifically care about for this build. Returning weapon gives a weapon plus one to two attack and damage rolls and also immediately returns to the thrower's hand after making a hit. We'll use these on our chakram to make them come home after landing. Enhanced weapon also gives plus one to attack and damage rolls to a weapon. And we can use this on our firearms to give them a little more oomph. Level 3 Artificers choose their Specialist route. Anyone familiar with the class can probably tell you we're heading down the Artillerist path to pick up our Sentry and Infernum. We get a few features with this subclass. The right tool for the job will let a Felios craft any set of artisan tools that exist magically until this feature is used again. Artillerists also have a special spell list. At this level we'll have Shield and Thunder Wave, which aren't really a Felios specific, except you can use Shield as the summer spell Barrier. The most important feature you get here is the Eldritch Cannon. This is a lengthy feature, so I'm going to trim and paraphrase, or we'll have a 30 minute video just talking about this. You can create a tiny cannon to hold, or a small cannon to place in a space. You can choose the type of cannon you want when you create it, either the Flamethrower, Force Ballista, or Protector. We'll go over the first two since those are the ones we'll use. The Flamethrower is going to be our Infernum. The cannon fires a wave of fire in a 15 foot cone. Each creature in the cone has to make a deck save or take 2d8 fire damage. The Force Ballista is going to be our sentry. The cannon can make a ranged spell attack. On hit, the target takes 2d8 force damage and is pushed 5 feet away from the cannon. Jeez, both subclasses so far have been overloaded with stuff to talk about. Fourth level artificers gain an ability score improvement. We're going to now angle towards maxing our intelligence with 2 points here. Our final level in Artificer is going to get us the Arcane Firearm which we can use to flavor our next class of spell as coming out of a rod carved to look like a gun. You essentially carve runes into a wand, staff, or rod and grant it the ability to become an arcane focus. Speaking of that, next class we're going to take is a sharp left turn to wizard to get our final bit of abilities. Level 1 wizards have a d6 hit die and you gain no new proficiencies. 
You do get Arcane Recovery though, which lets you restore spell slots equal in level to half your wizard level on a short rest. Second level wizards choose their Arcane Tradition. We're going to go with Graviturgy Magic to fully turn on Gravitum. This gives us the Adjust Density feature which allows you to halve or double a target's weight. When the weight is halved, the target has 10 extra speed, can jump twice as far, and has disadvantage on strength checks and saves. You'll more likely be doubling the weight, reducing the speed of it by 10 feet, but it does technically give advantage on those same strength checks and saves. Level 3 Wizards gain 2nd level spells. We're only concerned with one spell at this level, Misty Step. As always, we flavor this as the summoner spell Flash. You can use a bonus action to surround yourself in mist and teleport 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. 4th level wizards gain an ability score improvement. We're going to be a small taste away from reaching that max intelligence by taking 2 points here. Level 5 wizards gain 3rd level spells. We have 3 here that are very important. First is our Dusk Wave, which is going to be the Fireball spell. Choose a 20 foot radius sphere and each creature inside makes a deck save. Any failures take 8d6 fire damage and only half that on a success. Next we have Onslaught, which will grab through the spell Haste. You can haste a willing target within range, usually yourself. Until the spell's over, they have double speed, plus 2 to AC, advantage on deck saves, and it can take an additional action on its turn. If they choose to attack though, they can only use one attack, regardless of other features like multi-attack or extra attack. And our final spell is going to be Vampiric Touch, which will give us the passive healing of our Severum. You can touch a creature, and if it hits, the target takes 3d6 necrotic, and you regain hit points equal to half the damage dealt. 6th level Gravitar just gained the Gravity Well feature. Whenever you cast a spell on a creature, you can move that target 5 feet. Keep in mind you can use this as an ally as well if you buff them, since they're considered willing to move. Level 7 wizards gain 4th level spells. We're going to pick up Aphelios' ultimate, Moonlight Vigil, with Storm Sphere. Now I know this isn't a perfect match, but there aren't any better spells here without taking levels we don't have to give in Cleric. Storm Sphere lets you conjure a 20 foot radius sphere of whirling air. Any creature in the sphere when it appears or ending its turn there has to succeed on a strength save or take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. While you maintain concentration, you can use your bonus action to cause lightning to strike a creature. If you land a ranged spell attack, the target takes 46 lightning. Remember to action surge after casting this to use some of your weapons in conjunction with it to get the real flavor going. And the final level of this build is going to be an ability score improvement. We're going to max our intelligence and round off our wisdom. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First the good. Pew freaking pew. We have a lot of potential damage in this kit. Not quite gin level, but with sharpshooter we can get some work done. We have two ability scores max. That's huge when you're using the standard array. This build also has a ton of utility. Now the bad. Okay, I know calling a character squishy is a meme on this channel, but Jesus, he has 103 health. It is bad. I'm also disappointed we couldn't do flame strike for Aphelios' ultimate, but we would have had to sacrifice quite a bit to get that many levels in Cleric. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below as well as Amazon links to the books used in the build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards including access to our Discord community and monthly homebrew releases. We plan on turning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift or in the Forgotten Realms.